Welcome to Room 6, the channel dedicated to the local music scene and the people that make it, including me. I'm Josh, and today I've been asked to review A Meal Fit for a God, the new six-song EP by Room 6 alumni, Ed Gore. I did a remote interview with them at local venue and sandwich shop, Chiba Hut, a while ago, and it was different. You can check it out here when you're done watching this video. Now then, let's jump into this review, shall we? And with a name like Head Gore, better bring some napkins. Known for creating their own unique sounds by modding and tweaking their gear, I think Headgore can best be summed up by this handsome devil. His goal here seems to be not so much to tell a story as to make the listener feel something. Ultimately, that's the goal of all good art, and I think Headgore achieves it here. Sigh. He's so dreamy. Anywho, everything they do is definitely premeditated for maximum effect. It's an effort to understand what's going on sometimes, but the effort is definitely worth it. Incidentally, if you would like to be featured on the channel, whether reviewed, interviewed, or both, hit me up using the email address on screen or by clicking the Room 6 social media link down in the description. That's also where you will find ways to support the channel and help me make better videos, sponsor live showcases of past Room 6 interview guests, and more. And what the heck, feel free to subscribe, like, and share. Thanks! One unusual thing I noticed when I was sent the tracks by the band was the inclusion of something titled Case File. It seemed to be designed to set the mood for the album and also provide some backstory to the story. Here's an excerpt for context. According to his own writings, the suspect believes to be chosen by a higher entity to rid the earth of sinners in an attempt to redeem themselves of their own sins. Quote, nine must die to make my sins none. Okay, with that in mind, let's get into it. Kicking things off with a baseball bat to the olfactory senses, the first song of the album is An Unexpected Stench. No, 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 Meg, no, no, Meg. this is why we're here, this is why we're here, this is why we're here. Channeling the entire horror movie genre, this tune starts with a countdown before launching into a brutal, chugging attack over lyrics like, Decrepit cabin in the distance, the trees are speaking to me, evil is palpable within the air, this is beyond my comprehension. It really sets the mood for the rest of the album. The next track continues the horror movie crime scene theme with the title of Grizzly Images Caked in Blood. Nice. This one's more of an audio short than a full-fledged song, yet without the song, it, the story would feel incomplete. Taking no prisoners with the sonic assault, there's tons of distortion and crash symbol here to go with sparse lyrics like, I see hell before me, a soup made of many bodies. That's it. That's all the lyrics. And really, what's, what's left to say? Changing their song naming game up a little, the third tune is called Death of a Rosebush. How dare you! Open his head! This band seems to specialize in getting maximum effect from minimal lyrics, and this one is no different. Continuing with their own brand of alternative metal. Is that a subgenre? I feel like that's a subgenre. The alternating, slow, chugging, guttural vocals and blistering paced music help drive home lyrics like. Perfectly laid out for several years, dead roses and peonies, arranged in faux memorial to the bush that burst them. The next song is one I've actually reviewed before, A House That Seems to Breathe. Let's hear what past Josh had to say about it. From there, the song morphs from metal to slightly more industrial tones that keep the listener interested to see what comes next. Really? Is that what I sound like? Really? Wow. Anywho. With a title like The Walls Pull Me Under, The Window Takes a Look at Me, song number five immediately calls to mind an acid trip. Once the tune starts, however, we're treated to vocals basically dictating a crime scene report before the song shifts into a plea that repeats itself over and over. Lyrics like, four bodies have been recovered, but that does not fully grasp the amount of death that is contained in this house. Despite being alone, I feel very watched and crowded. This is beyond my comprehension. Make it clear that this crime scene is a gruesome one. Finishing up the album is a cover of a song written by a band called Mortician, titled Worms. I already know I'm going to be fighting for my life in these comments, trying to shoot down any anti-worm rhetoric. All living things kneel before your master! This being Headgore, though, the version we get here is completely their own. 
For one thing, their version is a little more dynamic and twice as long as the original. For another, they introduce some audio samples and higher pitched guitar, which I actually like better than the original. The song finishes with a nice loud scream, which seems appropriate for an album so horror-centric. Overall, A Meal Fit for a God by Headgore is a sonic assault in the best way possible. With the longest song being only two and a half minutes, they still manage to challenge the listener to find the message hidden within the noise. Make sure you check them out live if you get the chance. Uh, you'll be glad you did. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I hope that you will click the link down in the description to get your own copy of A Meal Fit for a God by Headgore. It's an awesome album if you're into that style of music, and if you're not, I, I challenge you to challenge yourself to dig into it and see what you think. In the meantime, if you want to see more videos like this, please click over here, and if you'd like to subscribe, you know what to do. Click down there and don't forget to ring the bell. Remember to be amazing, and we'll see you next time on Room 6.